NASCAR rejects Jennifer Jo Cobb's bid to debut at Talladega this weekend. Greg Biffle appears to be teaming up with Tony Stewart, and we've got a huge stack of mail y'all sent to go through. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. Show and Tell Tuesday is back. I know we took a week off. We had Josh Berry on the show this time last week, but today we've got a lot of news to react to, some surprising and perhaps controversial stories to discuss. And then in the second part of this episode, we will be going through all of the mail y'all have sent the past couple of weeks. I greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a thing. Let's not waste any time. First things first, this morning, yesterday, there were a lot of concerned fans who were led to believe that the upcoming Dover race weekend was canceled for some reason. Apparently there's an email that got sent out. If you went to Dover's website and you went to like the Ticketmaster link to buy tickets, all of the events for that weekend were listed as canceled. Dover soon put out a tweet reassuring everyone that the May 14th through 16th NASCAR races are not canceled. And they say that all current ticket holders will have the opportunity to attend the races. Exact details will be announced soon. They later then put this tweet out suggesting that fans who have already purchased tickets will need to submit an attendance decision by April 25th, which is in just a few days, less than a week. So it sounds like to me there was just a glitch in the system. Dover likely hit capacity. They're not going to run 100% capacity at Dover next month. So whatever number of tickets they were going to sell, they probably hit that limit. And that's triggered some sort of glitch in the Ticketmaster system they're using. The Dover races are not canceled. It sounds like there will still be a, a significant number of fans in the stands. If you have tickets to Dover, though, sounds like you got to check your emails. Anyway, that's just my public service announcement to start this episode because there were a lot of scared fans yesterday. Not sure what was going on at the Monster Mile. Did someone steal? Miles? Did he finally go rogue and wreck the track? There were a lot of conspiracy theories out there. This seems to be the answer. Anyway, let's talk about some exciting news. So the Superstar Racing Experience debuts in less than two months. That's Tony Stewart's new thing. Yesterday was media day or production day. There are tons of photos going around of all the drivers in their SRX fire suits, taking photos, doing little videos and things. And there was one surprising face seen in the background of some of these photos that many fans took notice of. First spotted in the background of one of my Michael Waltrip's Instagram posts. If we zoom in, that appears to be <gasps> the Biff. Greg Biffle in full SRX gear and full fire suit. It appears Biffle has not been linked to the SRX yet, not publicly at least. What's he doing there? Hmm. As if you needed any further confirmation, then on Tony Stewart's Instagram story, he actually tagged Greg Biffle in this photo right here. Again, you can clearly see he's in his fire suit. It appears that Greg Biffle has been a late addition to the SRX roster. NASCAR Truck Series champion, 19 time Cup Series winner. That's right. 51-year-old Greg Biffle, who most recently in 2019 won in his one and only truck series start of the season at Texas, he appears to be joining the full-time roster. Now that is not confirmed. Again, the Superstar Racing Experience has not publicly acknowledged Greg Biffle or said that Greg Biffle will be a part of their lineup. He could just be part-time perhaps, but he's at this photo shoot with all the other full-time drivers. That leads me to believe that the Biff will be in the car for all six races this summer. Another familiar NASCAR name, if you ask me, Greg Biffle may vault to the top or very near the top of my championship favorites. I know we're talking about SRX championships. I think like Tony Stewart, Bobby Labonte, Biffle, maybe some of the IndyCar guys, although I think with the style of racing and the style of cars, the, the stock car racers will probably be slightly favored. I think you got to look at those guys as probably the front runners to win the championship. Of course, then the ringers, the specialists that come in for certain races, I think they're going to be tough to beat at their respective tracks. But when it comes to trying to predict the first ever SRX full season champion, I think it's going to come from Tony Stewart, Bobby Labonte, or Greg Biffle. If I had to guess, having seen none of them on track, in some cases in years, those are my predictions. I think it's going to come down to those three. Greg Biffle, a very formidable opponent that has now entered into the fold. Very excited to see the Biff. He's kind of like Bobby Labonte or his former teammate Matt Kenseth, who, you know, they just keep coming back for more. I mean, this isn't NASCAR, but like think back to 2019 when he made that random truck start at Texas and won. Last year, he made a start for GMS Racing. So he's done a couple one-off truck series races despite not having raced in the Cup Series since 2016. He's done a couple stadium super truck races. He's been in other things as well. Much like how Bobby Labonte this year is running the entire modified tour, I believe. Or Matt Kenseth keeps postponing his Cup Series retirement until maybe now. He might finally be done now. <laughs> Something about that era of NASCAR drivers that just 
can't seem to let it go. They keep coming back. And, you know, I'm excited to see what Biffle and Labonte and, and Stewart and all these guys do in this series. I think those will be your front runners if you're wanting to talk about championship picks for the SRX. Does, does anyone really care about the SRX champion yet? Is that something that people are actually talking about? I don't think anyone's talking about that. I don't know. We'll see how this brand new series goes. Just wanted to mention Greg Biffle sneaking his way into those photo shoots. Now, we've got to talk about something a bit controversial. If you've been on Twitter, you've likely seen pretty much everyone lobbying in their respective takes on this subject, but you'll recall last week in an episode, Jennifer Jo Cobb, we talked about, was set to make her long anticipated Cup Series debut at Talladega this weekend. Longtime Truck Series veteran, made a bunch of Xfinity Series starts, but at long last was going to race a Cup Series race. Well, yesterday, Bob Pockris from Fox Sports reported that NASCAR refused to approve Jennifer Jo Cobb for this weekend. She will not be eligible to race at Talladega. Rick Ware Racing is going to have to put somebody else in that car. There have been some reports this morning that suggest it will be J.J. Yaley. As far as why NASCAR would not let Jennifer Jo Cobb race this weekend, they offered some fairly vague explanations. Again, this is reported by Bob Pockris, but according to NASCAR, the decision was based on both performance and quality. He also notes here that NASCAR has been more strict with some of their recent Cup approvals and that years ago she was briefly okayed for Cup, but not recently. And perhaps most importantly, he notes at the end there that this was not a result of her altercation on track with Norm Benning in the truck race at Richmond this last weekend. According to some reports, NASCAR actually informed Rick Ware Racing of this decision last week, like before the Richmond race. I'm sure the, the back and forth wrecking with Norm Benning that happened in, on Saturday didn't help matters, but it sounds like the decision was made before then. So they purely made this decision because they did not believe Jennifer Jo Cobb had the experience or quite frankly, the, the talent or the wherewithal to be allowed out on a Cup Series racetrack at Talladega, you know, the fastest, arguably the most dangerous track on the schedule. I'm putting it into my own words, sure, but pretty clearly that is what NASCAR is saying, that they do not trust Jennifer Jo Cobb enough to allow her on a Cup Series racetrack at Talladega. So there's a couple of things here. Before we talk about, you know, a potential solution to this particular issue, I want to make this clear. I don't think NASCAR is making the wrong decision here. I mean, objectively, if theoretically the NASCAR Cup Series is supposed to showcase the 40 best stock car racers on the planet, we know that's not actually the case. We know there's maybe 20 or 25 guys in the Cup Series that are in that conversation, but sure, there are some drivers that I think if you put a you know a late model star or some other drivers from other disciplines in those cars, I think they'd give them a run for their money. But theoretically, the Cup Series is supposed to be the 40 best drivers. If Jennifer Jo Cobb had been allowed to race at Talladega this weekend, I can pretty confidently say she would have been the 39th or 40th best driver on the track. So I actually applaud NASCAR for at least trying to uphold some sort of standard when it comes to the competition in the NASCAR Cup Series. And they've been somewhat consistent. They've made similar decisions in the last year alone. Like last year, they wouldn't allow James Davison to make his Cup debut at a Super Super Speedway. Or heck, Haley Deegan even had to run that Kansas race last year so that NASCAR would allow her to open this year at Daytona. And so I want to make this clear. I think that's smart. I think NASCAR should be setting some sort of baseline standard for competitors to qualify for a Cup Series race. And particularly when it comes to conversations about Daytona and Talladega, when one bad move can not only wreck a ton of cars, it can potentially injure drivers. It can potentially injure fans or track personnel. The margin for error and the potential collateral damage is much greater at those tracks than anywhere else in NASCAR. So I do think it's smart that NASCAR be more careful with their approvals for these types of races. And I I know some of y'all will argue that, well, Jennifer Jo Cobb, she's raced in trucks in Xfinity for years. Her one and only top 10 in NASCAR was at a super speedway 10 years ago. But NASCAR cites quality and no disrespect to Jennifer Jo Cobb, I understand she's working with much less than your average truck series team on a weekly basis, but she's not competitive. If she were to race this, year, this week's Cup Series race at Talladega, she would immediately lose the draft. She would be that slow car on the apron trying to get out of the way as the pack came hurtling by. And she'd probably be in that position several times over the course of the afternoon. NASCAR wants to avoid that I don't blame them. But the one thing that this debate has proved to everyone is that NASCAR needs to be more transparent and more clear about this approval process. And so that's why I want to talk about a potential solution. You know, Tommy Joe Martins was among those who suggested NASCAR implement something similar to the super license system in FIA. And he says here, with a driver review board, make it clear for fans and competitors. That's what's most important right there. You have to make things clear. And who better to judge whether a driver is worthy of racing in a cup race at Daytona or Talladega than their fellow drivers, drivers who've been there, done that, who knows how dangerous it can be, knows what to look for, knows who is experienced enough, who is mature enough to handle it. I don't see 
any problem with that. I encourage NASCAR to implement at least something somewhat similar, something where you can easily look at a list of qualifications and you can easily objectively check boxes. And if you check a certain number of boxes, you're eligible to race at you know all or certain Cup Series racetracks. It should be something clear that anyone can look up and easily understand and see what drivers qualify for what. It should be something easy and it doesn't have to be super strict. Like Jennifer Joe Cobb could have probably run a cup race anywhere else. They could have sent her out to Pocono, a two and a half mile, very fast racetrack. If she wanted to debut at Pocono, I don't think NASCAR would have stopped her. It's just Daytona and Talladega. They're their own special beasts, their own monsters. So I think it would be in NASCAR and the fans and the drivers and the team's best interest if NASCAR makes this qualification process clear and legible. Because the problem you run into here with Rick Ware Racing and Jennifer Joe Cobb is reportedly the reason she was going to race at Talladega is because Rick Ware Racing was able to sell sponsorship for her for that race. She brought a sponsor, brought money, revenue to Rick Ware Racing. I would assume since she's not going to be in the car, that deal probably fell through. And if Rick Ware is putting JJ Yaley in the car, they're probably missing out on the sponsorship dollars Jennifer Joe Cobb is bringing in. So it hurts teams financially if they don't understand NASCAR's review process eligibility requirements. So I don't think they got this one wrong. Again, I don't really have a problem with them declining Jennifer Joe Cobb from racing at Talladega against Cup Series cars this weekend. I don't think that's a wrong decision. I just like to see NASCAR spell out the equation, the math, show your work. How did you get to the right answer? I think it's the right answer, but how'd you get there? I think everyone would benefit if we were able to see the process, see the exact boxes NASCAR was checking, because it's confusing. Harrison Burton this weekend is also making his Cup Series debut, and NASCAR approved him, despite him being you know, less than half the age of Jennifer Joe Cobb. You want to talk about experience, Jennifer Joe Cobb, Harrison Burton. But Harrison Burton was approved this weekend. Why? It has to be that quality argument. I mean, Harrison Burton won four times in Xfinity last year. He'll be racing in a better car this weekend, you know, a Toyota car. That's the only metric I can see that would justify Burton racing this weekend and Jennifer Joe Cobb not. Experience, Jennifer Joe Cobb. But recent success, quality of ride, I guess that's where the advantage goes to Harrison Burton. So I think we can kind of infer what NASCAR's thinking was, but I'd love it if they spelled it out clearly and cohesively for everyone to understand so that we don't have these questions and we don't have people frustrated or selling sponsorship for races that they're not even eligible for going forward in the future. So I think it would be in everyone's best interest. I agree with a lot of what Tommy Joe Martin said in that one tweet and what a lot of other fans said as well. But let me know down below what you think about NASCAR implementing some sort of review system that's clear, that anyone can see and understand at any time. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of that. Now, we've covered all the news. Let's get to this week's edition of Show and Tell Tuesday. All right, I really appreciate all of you who've sent things to my P.O. box. I really appreciate the letters, the packages. Really, really awesome. We're going to go through the things y'all sent here in the last couple of weeks, starting with this first box from Coleman in North Carolina, I believe. Oh, check this out. A new keychain. Texas Terry Labonte, the original talking keychain. Oh, there's a button. What? Oh, no. Oh no, don't tell me it's out of battery. I mean, this thing's probably been in the box for, you know, 20 or so years. Well, I'll have to see if I can replace the batteries. I'll have to run up to Walmart or something because I don't think I have the battery that this fits in, but thank you. Oh, and then he sent some Matt Kenseth die cast cars. Lycos colors, then what is this? A, a preview? What, what does this mean? Taken out of the package. Oh my gosh, what? I've never seen this. So it's got the car cover on it, but it's actually like a cloth cover. So, so what's underneath? What's the surprise inside? Take it off. Oh my God. Oh, oh, is this the rookie scheme with the yellow rims? Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I didn't know they did that. What the heck? Thank you for this, Coleman. That is, this thing looks sharp. I love the cover. That It's like, I don't know, that's amazing. From Wyatt in Pennsylvania. Oh, this is cool. He made little homemade trading cards. I love this. Michael Waddle trip from a stream several years ago. That's hilarious. Pro gamer, Eric. I dig it. Thank you. Oh, wow. Justin from Nebraska sent me some NASCAR history. The 19, I guess, is this the full race? The 1998 Daytona 500. Of course, I don't want to spoil the ending for y'all, but this one was significant for a number of reasons. You know, streaming is great, but it's also good to hold on some hard copies from time to time. From Eric in Texas, it's not me, I swear, sent some Matt Kenseth trading cards. I don't think I have any of these either. Y'all sent me so many trading cards, but I don't think I've gotten hardly any duplicates. These all look like they came from like 2008, 2009, perhaps, the, the wing on the back. Yeah, yeah, with that gnarly splitter as well. Very, very cool, Eric. I'm adding these to my collection. Thank you. From Eric in Oregon, oh my God. Oh my God, Hang on, I gotta unstick this thing. With all the trading cards y'all been sending me, I think I joked in one of my last episodes that I wanna see myself on a trading card at some point. Eric here broke out the Photoshop machine <laughs> and did just that. Oh my gosh, look at the back. What, is it, what does it say on the back? Eric Eastip is a NASCAR media personality with a YouTube channel reaching over 150,000 subscribers. Over the years, he's racked up some impressive statistics and entertained us all. Well, thank you, that is very sweet. I love how he put me probably on Joey Logano's fire suit. He has a longer neck than I do, so certainly, Certainly some interesting proportions here, but this is 
This is quite amazing. This is special. I couldn't have asked for anything better. <laughs> oh yeah, Alex from North Carolina created an <laughs> Eric Eastep hero card. I love the fan art. Look at this. Oh, again, they got all of the out of the groove sponsors on the back. <laughs> also sent me some really cool trading cards. Look at these. Get that in the light. Jeremy Mayfield and check out this Ricky Rudd. It changes helmet, Ricky Rudd. Helmet, Ricky Rudd. Bro, that is so cool. Thank you. Yeah, you can tell I took a week off because there was a lot in the mailbox this week. Kyle from Pennsylvania just sent me a box of 164 scale die. Oh, and some trading cards, of course. Keep them coming. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Ooh, and some of the die cast. Matt Kenseth, Patriotic Car from, I think, 2015, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 2016. And David Reagan, Dr. Pepper, BK Racing Car, like that. Let's keep with the trading card theme from Greg in Missouri. Thank you for some of these retro ones. Another Ricky Rudd, the Ricky Rudd Show. Oh, but check these out. Bill Elliott, the McDonald's colors, Dale Jarrett. That looks super cool. And oh, Davey Allison in a sleeve. Coming out of the sleeve. Keep that, keep that in there. Davey. Ward Borton, that's pretty exciting as well. Nick from Massachusetts colored a, a very colorful race car here. That's, that's eye-catching. That's stunning. Ethan from Utah sent some trading cards as well. Matt Kenseth looking sharp as always. Bubba, what? oh my goodness. Oh, whoa. Are these real? <laughs> Hold on. So first off, Bubba Wallace, that I believe that is signed by Bubba Wallace. He even got the little, you know, race used piece of rubber, whatever that is in there. If that's a real signature, holy moly, thank you, Ethan. And on this one, I, this has to be fake, right? Come on, are you kidding me? Retro rated rookie Richard Petty with a signature. A, you see that, right? You guys are seeing this. I'm afraid to take it out of the sleeve, but I, I, I gotta look at this closer. I mean, Richard Petty has such a clean signature that I, I, I think it's real. Uh, any super sleuths in the comment section can comment for sure. Holy moly, Ethan, that is, if that is in fact real, I mean, either way, it's really cool, but if that is a real signature, that, you're crazy, man. Holy moly, where's the sleeve? For goodness gracious. Keep that bad boy clean and pristine. Holy moly, that, that's pretty cool. Jeez Louise, Ethan, very nice of you to send those. I did save the biggest package for last. This one comes, again, from another Eric. There are a lot of Eric's that watch this show. We call to each other from Michigan. Oh, it's a die cast. Oh my. And it is one I do not have. Bobby Labonte Interstate Batteries. This, I believe, is this his championship year? Is this 2000? It looks like it. I don't have any green die cast cars on this shelf, so I might need to find a place for this one to keep things mixed up. That is really, really cool. Yeah, I believe this is from the year 2000. I believe this is from his championship year. That's awesome. Wow, thank you, Eric. Very, very generous of you. That's gonna do it. Wow, we went through a lot of mail. Thank you guys for watching and thank you all a ton for sending me stuff. Some pretty crazy ads to the collection here today. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you all enjoyed watching and going through the mail with me today. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And as always, a huge thank you as well to my amazing Patreon supporters. Couldn't keep this show coming out as frequently as it does without your support. I greatly appreciate it. More to come this week. Talladega's got me super excited this weekend. I will see you all in the next episode. Appreciate the support. I'll see you real soon.